outer orange. All right, all right. Gotta, gotta get my fingers ready. Gotta get my talking, talking voice ready. Previous see ya. Welcome back. We have a lot of results to go through today. Fuzzy definitely got us a lot of pie charts, which is understandable. There's a lot of events. He spent like all day yesterday trying to get this all out for us. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Make those pie charts worth it. Let's go do it. Here we are. We're starting off with Sydney. Top eight standard breakdown to Ballista, two Gandiva, one Messiah, one Leticia, one. Oh god, the snake and one green on. A lot of people might question the Leticia pick actually. Leticia is actually very strong. She plays like Overlord basically, but just uh effectively like more crazier rear guards in a sense. And once she gets her like her system going of having the orders, she just keeps going and going and going until you basically die. Her hand starts small and then gradually gets bigger as the game goes on. So it's definitely like a very lethal deck, especially going first. Green on has definitely been a topic of conversation um i'm actually a little surprised that people are surprised because uh two things one when greed on first dropped df really talked about greed on a lot saying like saying that other people are saying it's strong and i remember this conversation because then i was thinking like oh i really like greed on i've always liked greed on but every time i've tried it i didn't really like the play style of like the way it used to be until the mass card got revealed and i was like hmm well if other people are saying it's good maybe i'll try it and actually my cards have been in the mail for like three weeks now i've been waiting on greed on for like this i have I, a funny story I actually have the everything greed on related except the new stuff so i've just been kind of just chilling here for a little bit just waiting on my stuff but then the second thing is actually derek dow made a video on greed on as well and i thought that was definitely going to be like the you know the push to 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 say like hey this deck's good by the way but no one seemed to like really react to it nobody really not really necessarily react to it but don't really i guess understood just the power of the deck basically just to give some emphasis it's really just the fact that you have the seven damage but now the deck also can attack with its front row versus before you have like maybe two attacks you can also get like the triple vanguard restand but you don't really want to go for that you actually just want to set up and just have big beefy numbers and just keep applying pressure with the vanguard there's also a guard restrict now so where if you were to guard you have to guard with two and dropping the the pg and having to drop other stuff is really painful on the hand they die at seven so you have to replenish your hand to try to reset up and try to do everything in time while they were while they're also at seven they could heal out a lot faster than you and healing in d is like insane by the way so all that combined with like the touch of numbers and having the extra attack really made the deck a lot stronger i will say i think it's gonna be a little weaker once set 13 drops but i think it's at 12 meta it's definitely one of the stronger picks in this meta so we are gonna see quite a bit of this so just brace yourself uh we also got of course gandiva the, the messiah all the other stuff ballista the, the usual stuff Stuff, so that that makes sense and also before i officially switch off because greedon depletes hand ballista actually has a hard time into a deck like this because a lot of their hand is like pieces that they want to keep and all the stuff and if you apply a lot of pressure they actually die the reason why i know this is actually because strangely enough lagberg into ballista is actually a pretty even match i remember someone tried to argue with me <laughs> at my locals saying that that's not true and then we faced each other at locals and they died um and the reason being is because again like that hand depletion just really hurts the deck they start losing their pieces and they start dying because of that greedon forcing that hand deplete also works in a similar aspect this one in particular did not have the green on make through which happens you know it is still d to other stuff other elements can happen too so we had first place with uh Gandiva. second place is, uh, was leticia third place was the messiah fourth place was snake now if i'm not mistaken this is sydney so this is actually the um this was streamed i did watch this i was watching v and d at the same time so i missed a couple parts between them because i had them both on and i was actually up till 3 i'm watching this because i was actually really enjoying this props to kai for getting this to be streamed i thought that was amazing now i want to make something clear what they really liked about that stream and i was actually gonna make a tweet on it i just kind of forgot but my favorite part about the stream is that in top eight they actually showed the tops like how many tops each player had which made it so much more interesting to watch because it added like an emphasis of like good player versus other good player and then you see like the difference like this person has like eight tops this person has like four tops and you're thinking like oh maybe the person with four tops is gonna clutch it through and beat the person with eight tops and it just had so much more uh like interest into like watching the games also some of the tops were older so it's cool to see like older players coming back and playing and i just thought that casa was really cool and if you don't know no, just just go to just go to wcc's channel high streams like the recently streamed i don't know if they're up they should be because youtube instantly puts them over it's not twitch where they just disappear they just go over to the live tab so they should be there but yes you should check that out because they were really fun to watch anyway so this is, this is the results for that sorry we're a little off topic this is gonna be a long video i can feel it but uh, everything makes sense here uh, this is the only deck that i just always question i kind of i saw the match for this deck and i'm like yeah, i don't know like it just i don't know it's just uh, it's, it's late game is good but it's early game is just so bad 
And it takes so long to ramp up, but I don't know. It just feels kind of weird. It is getting a promo though, and the promo is actually pretty good. Hey, this was a big premium. Looks like a lot of people are very surprised by a good old little uh, Narakami over here. The two different Narakamis. This Narakami makes sense. This Narakami makes less sense to most people. This guy was basically running the Dunkery package with the finisher of uh, Armor Break because, as most people know, Thalvas is like an insanely strong deck. Well, guess what beats Thalvas? Armor Break Dragon because you just call a bunch of Excel markers, and guess what? Armor Break Dragon gets 10k per Excel marker and a crit. So you just it just becomes lethal, and you can't something restrict it. So if you just give it three damage to work with, you're dead. And this deck doesn't go through Carabas that much. I actually think both decks don't go through Carabas that much. So once you ride Armor Break, it's kind of game over for your opponent. They usually can't guard it unless they're playing like Bermuda Triangle or something. Bermuda is one of the few decks that can maybe outguard like an Armor Break Dragon. And even then, it's going to take a lot of LEs to get there. But... Yeah, this this uh this is a pro definitely probably about a pick. It probably half like uh, I just want to come and have fun because apparently this guy is actually just pretty, he's pretty casual. He just likes playing the game, so he uh, he apparently he makes wonky decks normally. So that's him. Now there's the MFD player. I've talked about MFD so many times, and like I actually was like on the sauce of MFD last year. I definitely was not the right pick at the time because I just I because the dog came out and I was like, man, the dog's out and and God MFD is so good, but Maidens was the better pick, even though MFD had the high roll. But Maidens obviously had. The, the, it was the better choice. I talked about this again in the past two, but the Entrahana hit actually hurt MFD as well because the Entrahana in that deck with the Gear Cat was actually good because you're decked in cards, you're searching through your deck, you're at, the back row gets insanely high. So when you go into your second turn, the Gear Cats are like really high in bind because they're like plus 18, plus 19, plus 20k bind in the back row, and you're swinging with guard restricts. So because you're swinging with guard restricts and the cats in the back, your opponent gets in a really bad position. So I'm actually really sad that the Entrahana got hit for that reason. I was hoping they just like I was hoping to keep it at one just to make MFD better, but it's okay. MFD also has other cards that ha it has to run. It's a very like high roll deck, so honestly, making space for Entrahana means you have to make sp you have to stop making space for other cards. So it makes sense, but it's still just it's still just pretty strong. Grand Blue has its promo now, so with the promo in mind, Night Rose got significantly stronger in my opinion. I think before it was one of those decks where like I don't really know why people were topping with it. Now with the promo, I understand why people are topping with it. It was it was that much to me. It was a bit it was a it was a big jump of ceiling. I feel like the deck didn't really have that ceiling. Before before, definitely that ceiling went up a bit but so yeah i think it's a lot stronger Anj, uh but, you know Anj has been Anj, and then thalvas of course so, kind of interesting so first place was the armor break uh dongari deck they, they were playing dongari which is interesting because that's the 17k base too has the triple drive and the crit pressure so this deck is kind of like annoying to deal with you do have to consistently keep binding but you ideally only really have like two great three turns the first turn would be dongari the second turn would usually be armor break if you need to go into armor break if you don't then you i guess you just run out dongari and just go again and hope that you have enough bind to kind of get through everything and then we have the mfd guy and then we have third was Thalvas and fourth was Thalvas again. So Thalvas, the Thalvas players were trying their hardest, but I will say that the two decks above them, one's a high roll deck <laughs> and one is a counter deck. So that's pretty rough. That's pretty rough. We did uh, this match was also streamed, and I actually watched the first and second place match. I didn't get a chance to see the Thalvas match because I think I was watching D at the time. So what happened is uh, at least for first and second place, the MFD player sadly bricked. I think they were second two on top of that, and then the first place player just uh, did the dungaree stuff, and then they rode armor break, and it was. GG because the MFT player had like a four or five card hand and they just couldn't guard like a, a four crit vanguard. I think on top of that, he also checked the crit uh, on, on, on drive check and it was just like, <laughs> it was like double whammy game over. It was a really fun game. You should definitely check it out. But anyway, so this is that. A very interesting result. It's very different from what people might expect, which I like. I like the fact that stuff like this is popping up because it just means that format isn't all just best decks there are some other decks that can break through and we're definitely seeing this you know people put brought like good decks like we saw a lot of good decks on the chart previously but the the more obscure ones actually broke through so that's really awesome now here we have premium for sydney so we had the the two eve decks the narakami decks we've got the Ghidorah, the dp the, the share nui and the suzano well the share nui might surprise some folks uh doesn't surprise me I, i've argued about this for a while dude but top is actually pretty good it's very very hard to play but i think it's actually a very good deck like i will say it's like it's like so hard to play that's almost not worth taking i feel like it's pretty rewarding if you know like every single matchup if you just know every deck you're facing you just i feel like you have the upper hand for the most part everything else makes sense honestly some people might question the eve stuff it's just basically different ballista stuff different form of decking your opponent out i think this one's a little bit more consistent but you have to wait a turn for a second third fourth looks like i'm not gonna go to the narakami stuff i feel like with the uh, narakami is just like old news same with bugs no offense congrats to all the players but god like we have really beat the horse 
course with Narc, me and Bugs recently. Bugs has been kind of falling off uh, in terms of like people playing Bugs, which is interesting to see. I guess well, they just the, the, the Narc commies and the other decks that are a little bit stronger than Bugs have just been blowing it out. So there's that. I will say Bugs is still an annoying matchup. I'm personally not a fan of it. I actually struggle with it, but part of the reason why I struggle with it is because I play the two clans that it's a little harder to play. Actually, I play three clans in Primo that I feel like a little harder into it now. Like the first two is definitely Pale Moon and, and Grand Blue, which both like auto lose to Bugs almost. Almost. I don't say 100%, but it's like almost an auto loss. And then I do play Bermuda, but Bermuda got weaker, right? They got the restrictions, stuff like that. I think the weak, the weaker Bermuda stuff is actually a hard time into this unless you're playing stuff like Riviere or stuff that, but stuff that kind of counters it a little bit. If you're not playing that stuff, it's actually pretty hard to, like if you're playing Highlander, it's actually, in my opinion, I actually think Highlander has a tough time into this. So here we have Malaysia and wow, uh, there's, they have, there's a Duke in here. Oh my God, that makes me so happy. I was just playing Duke the other day. I love Duke. Duke is like one of my favorites. I, it's like my, one of my favorite, like, decks in v i don't know why uh, I'm, i didn't grow up with duke or anything like that like i didn't play old vanguard but god i love duke uh everything else is like pretty very standard here we got a highlander which is a little unusual i feel like highlander in v is like it's good but not good uh i don't know it, it has its moments it has moments where it's like insane and uh, uh, but i feel like the moments it's insane are a lot less than what's what's bad most of the time it's like middle ground to bad but pawn makes sense that deck's pretty annoying i will say it's kind of kind of hard to win against Thalvas because I just retire your interceptors. And the same with Luar, by the way. And then we have Ange, and then, yeah, obviously Thalvas. And then going in, we got first place with Ange, and fourth place is Ange, too. They got second place Pawn, and third place was the Thalvas player. Very interesting stuff here because I will say, I think this deck struggles into this, but also they can just high roll you out of the game before it matters. I will say this deck has like insane high pressure. High pressure. Thalvas has a, Thalvas and Ange are very similar in terms of they both want to uh, not be rushed and they both want to have a hand when they ride to three. And this deck is one of those decks that says nah you're not getting that you're, i'm just gonna rush you down and uh, you either guard it or take it and if you take it you could just randomly die push to five damage too soon you can be in a bad position launch has the same exact issue like if you just rush that deck down and you put them to five uh they basically have to rely on healing after that that or that's a constant keep guarding they're really stuck so both these decks have the same thing where on turn three they start like hard farming but prior to turn three all their their entire hand is like pieces and they kind of need all of them unless they're holding a bunch of triggers and if they're holding a bunch of triggers that means they're, they're bricking and it's also bad because both these decks brick if they don't have normal units it's in hand this makes sense all really good decks uh they're they're all strong they all do their thing so yeah that's 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 just how it is so this is a premium uh, a lot of vanquisher a lot of link joker had a touch of the ballista with the reindeer and then we have revengers uh revengers is actually pretty good it's a very vanguard centric deck so if you're like worried about like your opponent trying to stop what you're doing usually if you just play revengers it'll be fine because most of what you do is vanguard really is, is vanguard centric the issue is your con your names you have the other Ranger names, you kind of want to make sure you constantly have access to those. If you have access to those, you're usually okay. I remember I, I saw one match, I think it was a BRO where there was a Revengers player. I think they're playing against Bugs, and I think they got cradled. And what happened was because everything got cradled, the Revenger player actually couldn't restand their Vanguard or whatever. They got like really stuck. Like they tried to stride to like other strides, like then like the normal strides. Because normally you sometimes you don't even stride. But what happened was they got really stuck because they lost the names. And basically they lost the game because of that, because they didn't have the they didn't have they didn't have their names anymore. They basically just ran out of Revengers and it really screwed them over. Top four. This is I think the second time Melista has ever topped. I think the first one was Ootman, and then this is the second one. I, got, I think this is the first official invite top that Melista has had. And then we had the fourth place top which was oot man and then uh, i think in eighth place we've had four total melissa so far i'm pretty sure that's the number i could be wrong i'm actually surprised the melissa player was able to deal with this right here i guess they might have like gone around it somehow because i will say this matchup is pretty tough it kind of just depends on how the link choker player opens but if they open pretty well this can be a very a very tough matchup because if they will start locking your board and the most of the players isn't aware of just how bad it's going to be uh they can just get instant they can get locked out of the game they can get locked out of their milcon malaysia standard so this was a bunch of minerva we got four two two ballistas one gandiva one zorga we have recently been talking about it more zorga's actually pretty good uh, I will say in this meta, it's good. I don't know about set 13. I've been hearing some people say that it's going to be still good at set 13. I'm a little bit more fishy about it. I'll have to kind of test and see. Ballista, still so being Ballista, we obviously have the Ballista at full power here. So, and so I say we got Diva and Minerva. Minerva is actually an insanely strong deck. So this also makes sense to me. And then top four, 
Looks like this. Zorgo won the whole thing. When it doesn't brick, this deck's like insane. You can't really stop it. You can't really counter it. Like it's in the it's in like the, the, the perfect spot right now where there's so much you can't do to stop what it's doing. Like, uh, uh, and, but the minute it bricks, it just it just becomes so much in favor to these decks right here. Like these decks start popping off like crazy. All right, next we have Premium Netherlands. Now here I'm gonna just highlight the Grand Blue real quick first because it's Grand Blue, and that's Maxime. And as someone who has been playing Grand Blue. I'm really excited to see what kind of video he's going to bring out for Grand Blue. So I can't wait to see that Maxime. Very excited because I've been playing Grand Blue, but I haven't been competitively playing Grand Blue. And either because the reason, the main reason being is over here, at least where I'm at, <laughs> specifically my side of the States, a lot of bugs players. And I mean, a lot of bugs players. And like, I've tried playing Grand Blue and then I just bump into Grador and I'm like, cool. Next game. So I've actually been playing a lot of Bermuda Triangle instead because Bermuda Triangle can go around go who any and all this random stuff on this trial a lot easier. I'm really excited to see what what makes you created because this is a ghosty list. It's it's not Night Rose. A lot of people that are playing Grand Blue are actually playing Night Rose, but he chose to go back to the control ghosty route, which I understand because you have a bunch of answers to a bunch of random crap that people do and except except Gador. The Riviera here. This is JJ, so that's really cool. Go, go, congrats JJ. We had the had some Link Jokers breakthrough. Had the Maidens, which I believe that's Dave Vect, and then we had the. Uh, Susano, and then we had the Vanquisher, and then Riviera, and yeah, I think that's everything. First place was Anthony, second place was Maxime, we got third place, another Maxime, and fourth place was a Matt. So we had basically Link Joker, Grand Blue, OTT, and Link Joker again. So very awesome stuff to see. I feel like Grand Blue has an overall really good matchup into the Link Joker stuff. I feel like you don't really care what Link Joker is doing. You just kind of play the game, slowly outgrind the Link Joker player. Eventually, they will can't handle what, what Grand Blue has in store. And as long as you play carefully into the lock stuff, you're usually okay. Yeah, the standard ones. So this is the one that's really interesting. A lot of people might be very surprised by this because there's three Greedons on here. One of the Greedons I knew about, I I knew that the person was taking Greedon because someone else was telling me that they've been testing into this person. I'm not going to say exactly who and what and when uh, just because it's their business. I'm not really too close with them, but I actually knew that one Greedon was definitely coming to this event. So I, I knew that. Um, and then the rest is just, you know, uh, I didn't know about the other two, but long story short, uh, very interesting pie chart. Ava doing Ava stuff, Alista again, Diva Minerva, and then we got the Greedons. I think Greedon really accelerates into these other decks really well, personally. I think Minerva is the only exception out of this. So let's look at top four, which this is what top four looks like. So we have the three Greedons, then we had the one again, Diva player, and I gotta feel bad. I, I supposedly these, these, all three of them know each other. So it kind of sucks that they all have to fight each other, but the upside is they all tested to each other. They all got an invite. Now all of them could go try. Travel. That's crazy. They can all just go have fun. Congrats to all of them. You guys can check out their list. I think they all were probably very somewhere. I feel like there is a very good cooked list of this deck. And I think that's probably the most, I guess the most viable version of it. Cause this deck's actually like, you have to play the deck very carefully. It's very reliant on what your soul setup is, what your hands looking like, how your desire devils are doing. Like there's a bunch of like very specific setup that you really need to focus on. So there's like a certain way kind of want to build the deck to get to those specific conditions. Now we got JP side of things. This is the set third stuff honestly it looks basically about the same about how it's been looking it's just a bunch of the same decks topping um and then we have a touch of other stuff like the only thing that's changed here is we see an archite and a leticia and a floaty rosa breakthrough everything else has been showing results in some way shape or form what it looks like and then this is that one deck again that i don't remember the name of again but it's the other bang dream collab set and then we have the jeweled we have the might go we have leonor and might go charm out bastion bastion youth uh, Leonorn, Java, and Youth. This is a very, very strong team right here. They got fourth. Very strong team right here. Actually, all of these teams are really strong. I don't even know. I, I just, I have like a preference thing. Like I like having three different decks versus three of the same nation. That's just how I feel. That's just like a me thing. But like, God, all these decks are just really powerful. So this all makes sense to me. Let's have the Vancouver results. And honestly, all very, they're all very valuable topping decks. Again, keep in mind the promo is officially out for the English side. So that's why we're seeing Night Rose here. We got the first place, which is Night Rose. And we have second place, we had Leopold. Third place, we had Charlie, who was card to Diego, Charlie you got your invite and then we had uh, with night rose and then we had thawa so night rose i think was a good pick into this event because it's right before the orange promo drops and it's right after like the grand blue promo dropped you know so i feel like it was like right in a good spot to where this uh this deck really accelerates i think the deck will be at peak right now and then as we get more promos it'll start slowly decreasing but it'll still be good if you, if you don't know the promo basically extends attacks uh, it, and because you're discarding to like a top five to grab something the discard it works really well because you're setting up your drop zone so you're not really hurting yourself by discarding where other clans could be a little bit more hurt by discarding the the promo like a good example is even thavas you know they discard their promo it's 
it's basically gone for the rest of the game. Uh, I think they could cycle it back, but they wouldn't want to do that because they'd rather cycle the Lambros back. And you can kind of like extend now. You can like swing with something, swing with it, call a dragon, and swing with the dragon, and swing with Night Rose. You could call it back out if you want, and then you can swing with it again and then use its effect to call something else out. Or you can uh, go with double dragon, or you can call it the column out and then, you know, call it ghost ship or something. You just have a bunch of more extensions, like little baby extensions in between. It kind of sets you up. It is a lot of counter blasts, which is why you'll notice some of these lists are running cutlasses. Just when I read the card, I was like, oh, I guess I got to run cutlass again because you used to have to run cutlass before. If you guys don't remember, Night Rose used to be very counter blast heavy. It still is, but now, but then when, when Beatrice came out, it lowered on the counter blast heaviness, basically because Beatrice is a soul blast call card and Calm Bird said counter blast call card, but we used to run Night Mist, grade two variant that said like, um, on place counter blast call card but again that means you have to play column bard and then just play that card to basically set up the dragons that's two counter blasts and then night rose with counter blast that's three counter blasts so back then if you really wanted to truly play the deck and not like randomly die to like counter blast you have to run cutlasses but then beatrice came out and then because of that you didn't have to run cutlasses but now with the promo out you can go anywhere between like two counter blasts four counter blasts it's just a lot of cb depending on how you multi-attack and what you're doing and how you're setting up and because of that the cutlass is like back basically so the cutlass is like basically a four if you if you if you're playing the the, the promo at four the cutlasses should be a four but anyway going back to this so all, all really good stuff congratulations to everything everyone and leopold got second which leopold does pop off for Really crazy into night rose by the way because again excel decks both of these decks actually play really well into rose but i will say rose's pop-off is now pretty insane where it has a better time into these types of decks so that's why we're also seeing these the, the results the way we are because night rose is ceiling increase so it actually can win the game faster and because it can win the game faster these decks can't accelerate fast enough with their excel markers the premium breakdown we have a bunch of narcami again we have the one bermuda triangle one dimension police one golds I think that's Sergio. And then we have the Kagura, we have the Nova Grappler, and then we also have Victor, which I believe is Steven Lee. And the first place was Steven Lee with Victor. Uh, Victor does pop off like crazy. I, I'm not, I don't know Nova Grappler enough, so I can't tell you what he did or didn't do to make the deck like really, really, really impactful, but I'm sure whatever he did worked really well. I'm sure he tested the, the living crap out of it and made it work. So hence why he's first place. So the second place we have the, the Reindeer, third place and fourth place we have the Vanquisher. So congrats. Vancouver Standard. This is, sorry, this is Steven Lee. So <laughs> there we go. That's Steven Lee. Now is Zorga, we have the two Velistas, two Tamayu. Tamayu is interesting. Uh, I actually, I'm kind of, that, that's weird. And to me, that's weird. Out of all the decks that tops, that's a weird one. And then we have the one Hexa, or one Gandiva, one Minerva, and I think that's all of them, right? And the Zorga. To me, it's interesting. I actually think Tamayu is not very strong. I will say when it pops off, it pops off. When it has the doll set up, it's in a good spot. It kind of keeps doing, doing the same thing over and over again. But I don't know, the deck's kill potential is just really weird sometimes. It just sometimes just doesn't do anything. I don't know, it's weird. So this is what top four looks like. We have the Tamar Year breakthrough in fourth. So you got first place, second place was the Hexor player, third place was Gandiva, and then fourth place we have Kelvin. Here is V Premium. So this is V. We did have a ghosty breakthrough. We have the uh, we have the Fenrir, the Glendios, a Spike Brothers, two Thalvas, and two Luard. Spikes is pretty unusual. I will say in this stage, it is very unusual to see this deck. The deck's not bad. Like it can actually randomly roll you out of existence. Uh, it's especially if you don't know how to face it. If you don't know how to face this deck, you can just die. I I am one of those people where I am scared of Spike Brothers. <laughs> I don't care what I'm on. I'm always, if they put the starter as Spike Brothers, I'm scared. I do not like facing Spike Brothers. I, I've gone, I've talked to so many people about this. They're like, what do you mean? It's such an easy matchup. Bro, I don't know. Six attacks, all have crits on them. Everything's swinging for lethal. Bro, I, I don't know. You have like, you can take, uh, you can take three swings and then you're dead. Like it's, it can be so scary. Especially if you give him a counter boss. If you don't give him a counter boss, I think you're fine. But the minute you give him that CB, oh my God. I get, <laughs> the deck just pops off. It's, it's very scary. But anyway, everything else here, Ghosties, I think is a little tough to play into certain, there's certain matches that Ghosties just auto loses to, especially in Arakami. Sometimes Luard and Thalvas also kind of kill it because they, they, they can just double pop your interceptors if you choose to like, call them out with make the ghosty you actually don't always have the interceptors now but still if they pop your shield and your hands kind of low you just kind of die and by the way spikes actually also pops <laughs> so it's very scary fenrir can pop yeah Go ghosty just has a hard time it's a popping decks especially like decks like kagura and vanquisher like for the most part because those decks just costly board wipe you and it's hard to repunish the board going on in this is what top four looks like and actually spikes won the whole thing that's crazy to me uh that's actually cra i didn't I actually didn't I had no idea i so heard some of the results before but this one I actually did not know went like this that's actually wild second is Thalvas third is Glendios and fourth is Thalvas again 
Uh, and Spikes just completely rolled these players out. That's crazy. So that is all the results. There's a bunch of cool stuff between good decks and unique decks, underground decks, and then a top decks. There's just been a bunch of stuff everywhere. It's been really fun to watch. Really cool to like observe from a distance. Can't wait to see more results. I'm actually really excited. This is a lot to talk about. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too much. I'm excited. We have more promos coming out. So the meta is going to shift just a little bit more. Just stay tuned. The Bermuda promo is pretty insane. So that's going to definitely change some. Definitely going to rattle up the meta even more. So I'm very excited to see how V and and we're going to start doing dealing with that as well. And then D is also in set 12 meta going into set 13 meta very pretty soon. So well, not soon, but we got it. We got a bit left, but you know, it's coming. So yeah, get excited. You stay awesome. Stay great. Uh, congratulations to everyone. Other than that, guys, peace out. Don't forget below. Let me, below, let me know below how you did. If you were there, if you weren't there, what, what you did. I don't know what you ate for breakfast or whatever you're going to move for. Anyway, peace out, guys. That's for Daniel. See you guys in a future video. Bye.